Hello everybody, today we're doing a video for GTA Car Kits in a 2018 Infinity QX80 and today we're going to show you how to install our Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Kit. As you can see it's already installed into this car. It's been paired to iPhone wirelessly. You can also pair it to your Android phone wirelessly. And you can control the system with the original touchscreen controls or you can control it with this center knob right here. You will not lose any functionality of your car. If you put your car into reverse, the camera will still work. Nothing gets disabled. Also, the system integrates with the original microphone, so you don't need to install an extra one. And now we're going to show you how to install it in this Infinity. So the tools that you're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver. This is our T20 Torx screwdriver. This is a panel hook tool, and this is a regular panel removal tool. And of course, you're going to need our product. So we'll begin here with our shift knob and we have to remove it. So in order to do that, we will get underneath here in order to move the leather boot down. And you're gonna see this metal clip that holds the shift knob. So you just unlock it. With this clip removed, now you can just grab the shift knob and remove it. Next, we have to remove the center console. So we opened up the armrest, so it gives us space here. And then just use your hands and release the both sides so this piece is free and then you're gonna tilt it up and turn it so at this point you can either just leave it like this that's what we're gonna do or you can actually disconnect it so it's not in the way so now we have to get to the screws that hold everything in place and they're covered by these side panels and that's what we need to remove next these big pieces on the side so we'll start on the passenger side and first you need to release the clip at the bottom once that's released now there are clips along here so pull the entire panel towards yourself there's also a clip on the top and now there's this piece of plastic and it looks like a hook that holds everything in place and you need to release it and to do that you need to lift the entire thing up and pull it towards yourself as you can see it released and then there's another clip and in order to release that one you need to tilt everything and it comes out so as you can see that's the piece that i'm talking about and once you have it loose then you can just grab the entire thing and move it away now we will do the same on the driver's side so again we will release the clips at the bottom then you will pull the entire thing towards yourself then you lift it up release and then tilt and remove the entire thing now you're going to see there are four phillips screws so there are two on each side here these hold this entire panel right here and then there are two on top and those ones hold the vents so we will remove all four right now now we will grab this entire piece here to unclip it and just wiggle it out and once you got it off there are going to be two connections at the back which you need to disconnect so you just press on the clips and disconnect them once we removed the panel you're going to see there's one more bolt right here in the middle and that one is for these vents so you need to remove that now we can grab the vents and remove the vents so just wiggle it around and gently pull and it just comes off and now we need to remove the screen and there are the last two bolts underneath the screen that you need to remove and as you can see these bolts are silver compared to all the black ones that you removed so they have a little bit of different thread so when you're putting everything back make sure that the two silver bolts go to the bottom of the screen with the bolts removed you're just gonna tilt the screen forward and remove it at the back you're going to see some connections so these ones have the clip on them on top so you just disconnect them then there's another one here also this clip and then these ones they're color coordinated so when you're putting everything back make sure you insert them in the right spots again these are clips and now with the screen out we're going to show you what we're going to install inside of the screen so here we have our screen and here we have our kit and the tools that you're going to need in order to install our circuit board inside the screen we're going to be using a phillips screwdriver which we showed you earlier this is our t20 torx and this is our hook tool so now we're going to show you what comes inside the kit 
So here you have this cable that connects to the circuit board. The circuit board is what we're going to install inside the screen. Also we have some ribbon cables that go inside the screen. Then we have our main module which gets hidden inside the car. We have our wireless antenna. Then this is our main harnesses. So these two get plugged in at the back of the screen. This is our USB cable and this is what gets plugged in into the module. So we'll show you how to install everything and then you also have this piece of Velcro tape in order to secure the module inside your car. So now we will begin the installation of the circuit board into our screen. So first we're going to use our T20 Torx in order to remove these side brackets. There are two brackets, one on each side. So and there are two bolts holding each one of them. So we're just going to use our T20 and remove these two torque bolts. Now we're going to be using our Phillips screwdriver and we're going to remove a lot of bolts that hold everything in place. So there are four directly at the back of the screen. So we're going to remove those first. Here for this one, we're going to peel the sticker and get to the bolt behind it. Now we're going to do the bolts on the side of the screen. So there are two on the longer edges. So these two. I'm going to flip it over. Same thing over here. Now we're going to do the sides. So the sides have three bolts. Same thing. And then on the sides, when you remove the three bolts, you can actually remove these metal brackets here. So then this is the other side and these are the last three bolts. I'll show you from this angle. Here again we're going to remove this metal piece. So now we can take apart the screen and we're going to remove this backing. And here there's one more connection and that goes to the vent. You're just going to press on the clip and disconnected and we have to install our circuit board underneath the original circuit board and we're going to remove this one more bolt in the middle we will disconnect this antenna this flat video cable and in order to do that i release the clip i just lifted it up and now i can disconnect it this one you can use your finger or your nail or you can use the hook tool in order to lift up this lock in order to disconnect this one and now this is the big one again you can use your nail or this tool carefully in order to unlock the lock and once everything has been unlocked you disconnect everything you can just remove the original circuit board so this is the circuit board that came in our kit and that's what we're going to install inside the screen so we're going to start making some connections into it so this is the video cable that will come out out of your screen which you didn't have before so you have to connect it here into our circuit board there you go make sure that it's all the way in then we will take this uh, ribbon cable that also came in our kit and we're going to connect it right here so you're going to unlock the lock and carefully insert it in and make sure that everything lines up here in these corners this is corner number one, this is corner number two. Make sure that everything lines up and then you lock it in place. This is a small ribbon cable which has to go here. Same thing, it has to go in perfectly straight. Once you make sure that it's straight and all the way in, you lock it in place. Now we will start doing some connections. So this is ours and this is the original one. So the original one has to go in here and in order to make it easier for you, this is the first one that will connect into our circuit board. Once it clipped in and it's all the way in, you just lock it in place. Now we need to feed the original ribbon cable here in the middle and this will get connected here. So unlock the lock, insert it and then again same thing make sure that everything lines up in these corners right here here and here and it's fully straight and then you lock it in place. Our kit also came with these plastic rivets and that's what's going to hold this circuit board 
inside the screen. As you can see, the three holes line up. So you just insert the rivets and then lock them in place. So now we can start putting in the original circuit board back and when you're putting it back make sure that this antenna is moved away and first connection that we're going to do is this one on the side here because it's easier to do it first while everything is up in the air lock it in place and i'll carefully lower it in here we will connect the antenna then with the lock unlocked here we'll plug in this cable and lock it in place and now this the big one and now we can reinstall the original bolt in the middle here now this is the case we'll plug in this fan here and now the important part is that when you're locking everything in place you have this extra cable which you didn't have before which you need to accommodate and you will insert and put in the back of the screen and what sometimes happens when you're doing this step is that this case pulls on the cable and it comes out out of our circuit board and then you're not getting any video so when you're doing this make sure that you move the cable to the side and carefully lower this backing of the case so the cable doesn't move and at this point we will install a few bolts in order to hold everything in place and before securing all the bolts you're gonna grab the screen and take it to your car to test so you're gonna connect these two connections you're gonna turn on the ignition and make sure that the screen turns on and that the touch screen is working the function will be limited because the car is taking apart but this is good enough for the test so we just tested the screen it works when we turn on the ignition the original infinity logo lights up and the touch screen is working so at this point we can assemble the screen back so we're just gonna reinstall all the bolts back and the brackets of the screen and now we're gonna show you how we're gonna do that So now we have to attach the brackets. So this is the top of the screen, which has the two white plugs. So the brackets, the bolt holes have to be at the bottom. The brackets are also marked left and right. So this is the right bracket. And we'll attach it back here. So now with the screen fully assembled, now we can install everything inside our car. So now we're back in the car. We're gonna start doing the wiring. So we have our main harness. So on this end, this is the end that will go into our module and this end will go at the back of the screen and also there is a USB wire. So we need to install these three parts. So first we will take these two ends, as you can see they match these two cables. So we have to insert them behind here, behind this plastic and have it, and have it behind the screen. So we will right away take it and pl plug in the original cables into our cables. So these two ends will go to the back of the original screen, plus these original connections will go back to the original screen. This end that plugs into the module, we're gonna have somewhere around here because the module is gonna rest on this area. And then the USB cable uh, there are a few ways you can do this, but in this car we find that the best way is to drop the cable down here and we're going to have it come out from the side right here. So it's not in the way, it's in the passenger footwell compartment. So we're going to do that now. So you're just going to grab it and drop it down and catch it from the back. So you can see I'm dropping it down. I'm just going to reach with my hand here. I'm gonna pull it out and it's gonna rest right here for now. Now we have the screen and that extra wire that we installed into it. So this wire will also have to plug into our module. So we will fish it behind this plastic and have it 
come out into this area also. Now, once we've done that, now we can start connecting everything to the back of the screen. So first we will do the bottom row, and that makes it easier this way. And as I told you before, these connections are color-coded. So when you're putting them back, make sure you insert them into the correct spots. And now these two are from our kit. As you remember, we ran them up here. And then once that is all connected, you will tuck these wires in. You will tilt the screen and make sure not to pinch this extra wire anywhere. And we will line up the screen with these guide holes and put it back. So this is our main module. So first we'll plug in this wire from the screen. This is the video. Then this is our main harness. And then the last thing would be this uh, wireless antenna. So for now we'll just tuck in behind the screen to test everything. So we'll tuck it here on the side but once you're doing the final installation you can just peel back the double-sided tape and mount it somewhere on the plastic here. And then the module will rest right here above the head unit so you will tuck everything nice and neat once you make sure that everything fits properly you can velcro the module down so it doesn't move around and stays here so now with the module placed we're also going to perform another test before we assemble everything back so for that test you have to plug in back these two connections at the back of this panel that, that way the radio can turn on and you can test everything. So just plug it in for now. As you can see everything else is still disconnected. And we will turn on our ignition and we have our wire for iPhone. You can also use an Android uh, cable here with USB Type-C. Uh, first we will test by the wire, then through the settings you can pair your iPhone or Android uh, wirelessly. But first we will test by the wire. So you got to make sure that the original system lo loads up. And you're going to choose the audio source because this car doesn't have auxiliary. Uh, you would be using the Bluetooth sound source in order to hear stuff from CarPlay or Android Auto. So we'll press on that. And right now, Bluetooth audio. That's it. And now we're going to press and hold the back button. And you're going to get this extra mode which you didn't have before. And if this doesn't light up, something happens to the screen, means that one of the connections is not done right, and it's probably this one, and we will attach the picture of what might happen, and you, need, you would need to readjust this cable. But as you can see, everything works properly, so we'll connect our iPhone by the wire. It has to start charging, which it does, and then you're gonna see CarPlay come up automatically, and we're just gonna check the sound, and you're also checking the touchscreen control, so the sound is working. And then this is the main menu of CarPlay. You can also control it with this knob. So everything seems to be working properly. So first we'll put in these two bolts underneath the screen. As we mentioned earlier, the silver ones are the ones that have to go back there. Now we can reinstall the vents. So this panel we already plugged in and now you can just clip it back in into its clips and now we need to reinstall the four bolts so two here and two on top now it's time to put back these side panels and you carefully slide them in you first guide this hook in so you tilt it and guide it in so it goes in then you clip it towards the front of the car and then on the side adjust your USB cable so it's nicely tucked in in there and you can press on this panel so it clips in because there's one more clip right here. Now the same thing on the driver's side. First guide in the hooks. Clip everything in and then you will clip it on the side. To put the center console back it gets a little tricky because of this uh, shift lever so we suggest to put on your foot brake and then you move it towards the middle 
And I just press this clip. This is the emergency release. So now you can slide the center console back carefully. Make sure that you don't damage the leather here. You tilt it forward. And once everything is lined up, you just press it down and clip it in. And the final part would be the shift knob. So you just put it in all the way down and then clip it in place and secure it in place with this clip. So carefully slide it in. And then you can lift the boot up and make sure it clicks. So the installation has now been completed. We paired our iPhone wirelessly to the system. As you can see, there's no more wire. And now you can enjoy the system by either controlling it through the original control here. If you want to use this control, we suggest to unplug the original SD card, which is on the left side of the steering wheel. That way you don't interfere with the original navigation. So again, this was a video for GTA Car Kits in a Infinity QX80. I hope you liked the video and we'll see you next time.